So first of all is one. One is gonna be one's gonna be a bit of a doozy. We're gonna be on this one for a little bit longer um, than the others um, because the others overlap a bit more and the others are a little bit more self-explanatory. Um, so the church is one. Because we share it shares one source and founder in Christ. Christ reconciled all men to God by the cross, the Catechism says in 813. He is the one founder of the church. And the soul of the church is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit animates the church and is within all of the people of God. And unity, this oneness created by Christ being the one source, the one foundation of that came to open the church and the one who redeemed everyone, the one redeemer, that means that this unity is, is the essence of the church. This unity is essential. However, as we started to talk about earlier, within this unity, you still allow for this great diversity. God created this one planet with this insanely diverse plethora of, of different creatures that live within it, all these different ecosystems. My, my husband and I have been lately, we live at the beach, and we've um, been talking a lot lately about how fascinating it is that, that there's, there's entire worlds happening under the water in the ocean that people will never see. And that's all God. God created all of this diversity in this one world. And so the thought that for some reason his people and his church should all look like boring, like copycats of each other is, is really doesn't make any sense when you look at the mind-blowing creativity of God. Within his church, with all the things he calls good, there's going to be a lot of such beautiful differences because we all learn from each other. We all need each other's. We all need the strengths of other people and the church needs that so badly. It needs the strengths of all these different people and the passions of all these different people. So from Catechism 814 through 816, but really, right now, if you want to read the whole section on the Catechism about one, you can go to from 813 through 822. It's so, I mean, you could, it's so short if you just read that section. But it, it will help your heart a lot if you're still troubled by anything going on in the church right now. We're going to look at this section here for a little bit. So 814 begins by saying, from the beginning, this one church has been marked by great diversity, which comes from both the variety of God's gifts and the diversity of those who receive them. In that same section, it goes on to talk about the diversity within the churches. And in, in, in 816, it picks up that theme again. It talks about how within the church, you have the Catholic Church headquartered in Rome, which is where Peter sat, so that is the original foundation, the original headquarters of the Catholic Church, and, and has remained so. And then you have all of these parishes around the whole world. And the Catechism says that just as there's diversity within the people of God, within these churches, you're going to see diversity. You're going to see some traditions that are unique to those areas. You're going to see some rich cultural heritage um, influence some of the practice of the faith in those areas. And that is good. Again, the Catechism also is careful to say that it still has to be part of that unity. So again, allowing for diversity does not mean allowing for sin. It doesn't mean allowing for laziness. It doesn't mean allowing for things to get out of hand. And the Catechism, again, has very strong language later about people who become too too, too wrapped around kind of their own way they want to do religion that they pull themselves and other people away from religion. So allowing for diversity doesn't mean allowing for everything, but the Catechism specifically talks about how we need to maintain unity in the bond of peace, but within that unity and within even the churches, they will retain, some will retain their own traditions, the Catechism says. We see this as well in some of our efforts to bring in people from Anglicanism or Orthodoxy, some of those parishes that come, churches that come in from those practices are allowed to maintain some of the things that are not essential to their accepting the fullness of Catholic teaching and are kind of those small tea traditions um, that 
where they're allowed to, it, it, it helps them come into fullness with us. And so those little details that aren't essential to the true practice and acceptance of the fullness of the Catholic faith are allowed to remain. One example, one minor example of this that comes to mind just as I'm talking now, would be married priests. Priests, Anglican priests who were married, who come into the church and are obviously allowed to stay married and be a practicing Catholic priest within the church. That's an example of something that came in from a different tradition, from a different church, that's allowed to remain because it's a little T. It's not something that divides them from an essential belief in the Catholic Church and what it means to be a full Catholic. So, in order to maintain this unity in spite of all of this diversity, or in, rather in celebration of this diversity, the Catholic Church has these kind of three ways that it talks about how we maintain this bond. We maintain the bond of unity through the profession of one faith received from the apostles. Again, it has to go, you've got to accept that original faith that came down from the apostles through capital T tradition and sacred scripture. You have to accept that in its fullness as it is taught by the Catholic Church in order to be in, truly within this Catholic Church. The common celebration of divine worship, especially the sacraments, so again, that core of how you practice the sacraments and practice religion does have to be the same. And the apostolic succession through holy orders, maintaining fraternal concord of God's family. So you have to acknowledge the leaders of the church that have come down since Christ's time. That's where you have issues with some divisions in the church of people who don't accept certain popes from a certain point because that is, that is breaking away from this apostolic succession and it's losing the greater the grander point behind what the church is is what the church means and, and everything that she is a fulfillment of historically which is why we have to lay this foundation we're laying right now so after talking about that the, the catechism has it talks about wounds to unity and how to move towards unity because unity is so so important when it comes to the catholic church again at the beginning we said unity is the essence of the church it talks about how divisions within the church are often caused by people within the church on both sides um, not being not being able to dialogue in charity. It talks about how charity is so essential and divisions are often caused by people on both sides not being able to have a charitable dialogue about the things that they disagree about or concerned about, things of that nature. So always remember when you have something that concerns you that you don't agree with with the church or you think you don't agree, to do your research, and, and it's not re enough, you're not going to be able to do enough research in a day. You may not even be able to do enough research in a year. Some people, again, like we've said in earlier videos, there's some saints who spend their entire lives studying and sometimes wrestling with one point of the church. They believe it. Again, through faith and grace, they believe it, and so they are part of the church, and they practice and profess their belief in it, but the part of their brain that's still having a hard time kind of understanding it wants to understand it better. And so they spend their whole life studying it. So, so remember to do that. Um, you know, we're all invited to do that. As, as, as members of the church, we're, we're invited to constantly be coming into a richer understanding of the faith so that we can preach it to other peoples. Um, now we're going to talk about how to move towards unity. Um, Christ always gives his church the gift of unity. The Catechism says this is reference 820. But the church must always pray and work to maintain, reinforce, and perfect the unity that Christ wills for her. So we're given that gift of unity, but we have to work to continue to foster it and to protect it and to preserve it and to make it stronger. Um, and we do this. We move to unity um, through these different ways. We achieve unity by always renewing our fidelity. Church renew the church achieves unity by always renewing her fidelity to her mission. Um, the church, through the conversion of the hearts of the faithful, the church can continue to move towards unity um, because it is through it is within the church that we're going to see the division, as we said in that video from last week. Um, it is it is the believers who will be tested and pull each other apart um, during the kind of the last the big test of the church. It's it's the believers who are going to fraction each other. So the believers have to always be um, con converting their hearts and continuing to grow in charity. 
prayer in common for Christian unity, um, the church prays for unity, all the members of the church, all of us need to be praying for unity within Christians. Um, fraternal, so, so brotherly knowledge of each other. What a beautiful thing to point out that we achieve unity by being a family in the best sense, um, by being there for each other, by having this, this, this brotherly desire to know what is happening in each other's lives and to be there for each other and to take care of each other. Um, through an ecumenical formation of the faith, especially of priests. So again, the catechism is not letting anybody off the hook here. It talks about how important it is to be hitting, hitting this unity and preserving this unity by protecting it from all these different angles. Um, dialogue among theologians, even those who are outside of the Catholic Church, the catechism says, continuing to, to keep this conversation of faith alive and in talking to our Protestant brothers and sisters and those who practice religion as well. Um, other religions as well. Again, we're bookmarking that, coming back to that. Collaboration among Christians and service to mankind is a big one as well. So that is the, that is the kind of the discussion around how to move towards unity.